Episode 113, Being a Positive Influence with Marcy McGee. Welcome to Latter-day Life Coaches, the podcast where each episode is a conversation between me, Heather Rackham, and one of my amazing coach colleagues. Each coach here is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and a highly trained, experienced life coach making a great impact in the lives of their clients. And together, we have one main goal, helping you live your best life no matter what. You ready for this conversation with the coach? Here we go. Whether we intend to or not, we are all an influence to those around us. What we want to make sure happens is that the influence we are giving is coming from a place of love, because that is where we will have the greatest impact. But how do we do that? Coach Marcy McGee teaches on the podcast how listening, seeing others as God sees them, and dropping judgment are all critical in being the influence we want to be. If you have been looking for ways to better influence those around you, then definitely listen to this podcast, and then go check out Marcy's website and Instagram page so that you can take advantage of the positive influence she could have on your life. Well, everybody, welcome to the podcast today. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are and hoping to make it a little bit better for you as you listen to this today. I am joined by Coach Marcy McGee. And Marcy, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Heather. So this is the second time I've had the privilege of being on your podcast. Yep, so I appreciate fun. it. So much fun. And just a quick introduction of who I am and what I do is I started in 2018, the end of the year as a coach for a company where I taught or I coached high performers. And then in 2019, I went on to the life coach school to get certified with the intention of just learning more tools to help my clients because I loved the work that I did. And then at the end of 2020, a couple of people reached out to me and from the Pilates studio that I worked at a couple mornings a week, and I started coaching them privately. And that led to today where I now just work with my private clients as a certified success coach. And I help men and women and a few young adults create success, whatever that looks like for them. I think this is so fascinating because the word success is very, like it covers a broad spectrum, right? We, whether it's success in our personal lives, success in our professional lives, we all want success in some way. And so glad that that is like where you've honed in on because what oh, an influence thanks. you can have for so many people. Thank you. Yes. I love it. And you're right. Success is so personal, right? It is Mm -hmm. individual. It's what makes you feel successful. And it could be anything from having successful relationships or speaking up and saying, you know, what's true for you and so many different other ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I love it. Well, I'm so glad. And speaking of influence, that is what we want to talk about today and how we can have more of that in our lives. And before we start, I think it's important to note that we, like the word influence can mean a whole different thing now than it used to, right? We are surrounded by so many influencers in on social media that it's really easy for us to look at somebody who is an influencer as somebody who is, I mean, obviously they are influencing for some sort of personal gain in some way, right? Whether we notice that or not, but We're talking today about the type of influence you all know it, like the people that you've been around who have left a huge impression on your life, one where you just want to be better and, and hopefully, you know, makes us want to be an influence in somebody else's life in return. So that's kind of what we want to talk about today. That's right. That's the kind of influence we're talking about. Right. And I have yet to meet a person who's like, I just don't want any influence. You know, I, I'm just not interested in influencing people in my life. I don't really care about what they 
think or what they do. Like we all do want to be a good influence and we want to have more influence, especially with the people that we love and the people that we serve. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a type of manipulation or control or get people to do what we want them to do, but the type of influence that you spoke about where it inspires you, you Mm -hmm. know, to be the best that you can be. Yeah. So in our pursuits of being that person, that person who like, I, I just think, you know, I think about some of the people that I've known my entire life and I still run into them today who, when I see them, I just, I feel so much love and gratitude for them because they have had such a profound influence on my life. Like, where does that come from? And it sounds a little bit funny to even talk about because truly like they probably, I think, well, that person probably never thought about like, how can I be more of an influence to somebody? They probably never did. And not that you and I are even doing that either, but there just are things that we can do in some way to, to live a life like that. Absolutely. I mean, I have three children and a son-in-law and a daughter-in-law. My youngest is 19, but of course I want to be a good influence on them. Mm-hmm. I have a calling where I teach young women. They look so young. They're 11 turning 12 and 13. <laughs> yes. Are yes. you sure they should be here? <laughs> but so the young women, of course, I want to be an influence on them. And then the people that I get to work with and interact with in all the different ways. And I think about some of the people who had a, a good amount of influence on me when I was the age that I'm working with in the young women's. And I remember one leader specifically, like it were yesterday, honestly. And the reason why, like when she taught a class or she shared a comment that I would sit up and pay attention and listen is I knew she liked me. Like I knew she cared about me. She wasn't just there to preach or to tell me what to do but she laughed at my jokes and she asked about, you know, things that were interesting to me. And she, she didn't make me feel like, you know, that I wasn't spiritual enough or, or good enough or not enough in any way. Like Mm -hmm. I could just feel her love for me individually. Mm -hmm. And it had a huge impact on me. Like, what about when you think of someone who had a great deal of influence on you, Heather, what is it that you remember about that person? Yeah, I would say that obviously for all of us, that underlying, the strong underlying piece is love, right? Just the people who are really seeking from a place of love to, to put their arms around you in whatever way, in whatever way that looks like, right? Not physically always, but just emotionally. And, but yeah, I would say the same thing. People who took an interest in you, who made an effort to, include you or know what's going on in your life or know what's going on in your family. In fact, I just saw one of my young women's leaders last night. I was up on the ski hill and um, hadn't seen her for years. And I saw her last night and it just didn't, it's been years since I've seen her, but it didn't feel like that, right? Like it felt like I was still back in a young women's class with her and somebody who had shown influence or shown love to me and had been an influence on my life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That like, that's, that's a huge thing. When you can remember decades later, that feeling that this person loved you and it made you want to then do your best or show up as your best or, or also extend that love to others that it inspired Mm -hmm. you to show up in that same way. It's really powerful. And that's, that's the kind of influence we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. The influence that it's generational, that people pass it on because they remember how amazing it felt. They want to show up as leaders, as people, the way that the people they remember showing up, you know, with that. Yeah. Same. Yeah. So to get meta about it, right? Like I said previously, like this is probably not one of those things that we spend a lot of time thinking about. We just hope that it just happens, but mm-hmm. you're right. I think there are times and places where we do need to be intentional, intentional about being the person we want to be. And if you want to be somebody who is able to show up in this way to influence other people, let them feel of your love. What do we do? What does that look like? How do we do that? The first thing I think is seeing them not with our eyes, but more with God's eyes. If if we can look at people through his eyes, the way he sees them, he 
is all knowing. He knows what our fears are, what our desires are, what our struggles are, what our insecurities are, what our experiences are. Not that we'll ever have that type of ability, right? At least in, in this life, right? But we can certainly like pray for that, or we can attempt to see people the way that God sees them. And I think that that makes it so much easier to show up in that way when we're intentionally thinking, how does God see this person? Yeah. As we are out and about and we see people, we do see them Mm -hmm. making choices. Right. And Mm -hmm. I think it's so important for us to be able, like part of it for me is just to always just assume Mm -hmm. that everyone's doing the best they can and just know that whatever somebody is doing, they are trying their hardest. And Mm -hmm. that makes it so much easier for me to just love the people to, to love whoever it is that I am coming in contact with. And also kind of offers up a little bit, a piece of curiosity for me. If I'm assuming that they're doing the best they can, what is it they're doing their best they can at? My dad would be so mad at me because I just ended that sentence with a proposition. Is it a proposition? Whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to tell your dad. <laughs> Don't listen, dad. Yeah. Um. Anyway, when we assume that people are doing their best, it does give us some curiosity too. Like, what are they where are they doing their best? How are they doing their best? And that gives us a place to ask questions and to be curious and to ask. Absolutely. Yeah. I think about um, my daughter, my youngest, she is on a mission right now. And as you know, we get to talk to the, our missionaries on Mondays, which mm-hmm. is so awesome. And recently she was telling me about something that she was feeling a little bit stressed and anxious about is an upcoming transfer. Cause she's like, I just really love my companion and I just feel safe with her. And I don't know what it's going to be like, you know, with a new companion. And of course, like my, my human tendency, like wants to fix, I'm using air quotes when I say fix, right. Yeah. Yeah. To fix the situation and to let her know that, um, everything is going to be okay. And I can't even remember exactly what my response was. I could just feel a little bit of my own anxiousness coming up. And she's like, mom, that's not helpful. And so I paused and I'm like, okay, tell me what would be helpful. Cause I, I want to show up helpful for you, you know, mm-hmm. cause she's stressed and she's scared. And she, this is a lot to be 19 years old across the country And away from your home and your family and your friends and everything, you know, for the first time with a new companion after she's been comfortable with one for, you know, almost three months. So I was just thinking about that. She's like, well, mom, what would be helpful is for you to just like, listen and hear me. And I'm like, you are right. I'm like, that sucks. That is so hard to like go from someone that you feel safe with and that you love for three months to, to somebody new. And she's like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Keep going. I'm like, yeah, that's terrible. (laughs) I'm like, actually, I think they should let you stay with who you want to stay with as long as you want to. She's like, yeah, that's right. (laughs) Right. So just like listening and seeing and hearing, you know, what it is that she's worried about without trying to change her or fix the Mm -hmm. uncomfortable emotion for her is what influenced her to first of all, listen to anything that I had to say. Right. Mm -hmm. And then also to stay on the phone with me longer and to fill up my love and to know that I believe in her, Mm -hmm. which is, I think, what I really wanted was for, for her to know that. So, which is true compassion, right? Compassion is being able to sit with somebody in a moment Mm -hmm. in their pain without trying to change it, just to sit with them and be with them and be a companion. And some people might say, well, then you're like telling them that it's okay to, to be angry or it's okay to whatever it is that they, that you are sitting with them in. That's not it at all. It's you won't, you're not going to stay in that place forever. Right. That place of like, you're right. You should, you shouldn't ever have to move. You're not, you're not going to stay there forever, but they'll never even go with you to another place, a place that is productive for them in a different way, unless they know that you're willing to sit with them where they are in that moment. 
Absolutely. A hundred percent. Couldn't have said it better. And I think that it is okay to be angry. Yes, we have to. That's one of the steps, but so many people are afraid of that. They think, well, we can't do that. We're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to just skip past that. And no, we can't, we'll never be able to, you can try to, but you'll just keep coming back to that place. Well, and my nervous system wants to skip that. Right. Mm -hmm. So for sure, my, my human tendency is to want to get out of that. But the beautiful thing about coaching is it's just this reminder of who we want to be and how we can, first of all, show up loving for ourselves so that we can then extend that to Mm -hmm. the people in our lives. That's one of the things that I find so, so helpful Mm -hmm. is what it does for my relationships with people, which then increases my influence with them. Right. And you're right. It doesn't send them spiraling down a path when we say, you're right. That sucks. If anything, it just kind of makes them like breathe, feel seen. And then they're more open to a different perspective, right? Another way of looking at something. But if you, if you just skip over that, if you're just like, you shouldn't feel frustrated, just be great or, you know, have a good attitude or any of that. Like if you don't feel seen, it's so challenging to open up and, and look at any other. Yeah. Suggestion. Any other option, any other option. Okay. So if being seen, being heard is, or showing people that they are seen, showing people that they are heard is one of the ways that we can have greater influence. Mm-hmm. What else? I mean, we kind of chalked a lot into that little one, but seen and heard kind of encompasses many things. Yeah. I think, that, I think that's the biggest thing. I think mm-hmm. the biggest thing is, is seeing people and hearing them and trying your best to like, imagine how God sees them, Mm -hmm. what he sees in them, what he knows they're worried about struggling with is important to them, what they want, what their heart's desire is. I think that's like the biggest part of it. Mm -hmm. And that's when you, I think, create the openness for them to hear maybe a different way right. of looking at something. Okay. So if that's the biggest thing, mm-hmm. what gets in the way of us being able to do that? The thing that builds a wall between us and the person we're trying to influence is whenever we're in judgment. And I actually have a good friend of mine who I went to dinner with recently. She was a coach at the same company that I worked with. And now she is at a different company and she manages other coaches. And she was telling me that she was struggling with this one coach and she had to um, kind of put her on probation or she just wasn't able to give her clients for a while. And she was just like, I, I just couldn't get through her. I don't know what, what was happening, but you know, everything I was saying was not making a difference. She's like, and then like it came to me, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm judging her. Like, no wonder I haven't been able to help this woman. I've been totally judging her. She's like, when I cleaned that up and when I say clean that up, you know, I'm metaphorically speaking, right? <laughs> yes. like, like when we are cleaning up our thoughts about someone mm-hmm. where the judgment is being created by our brain and we're intentionally thinking thoughts that create love and curiosity, right? Mm -hmm. Then you can go to the person that you want to influence, that you want to help, that you want to support, that you want to lift from that clean place. And the experience will be very different. And the experience was very different for her when she cleaned up her thoughts that were creating judgment about this woman. And she went to her and she just opened up to her and, and saw her and shared with her, you know, her love for her. She's like, the woman had a totally different response and she was open and she was wanting to hear what this lady had to say and wanting to improve in whatever it was that she was working on. And, and I'm like, Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Cause I totally forget that. Right. Like it is something we're just so conditioned and, and wired to do to judge. And it feels so helpful. Like, no, mm-hmm. this is what you're doing wrong. And this is why you need to change and, and all of that. And yet what it really creates is 
like I said, that, that wall, that disconnect between you and that other person. And and then we have no influence over them or we're influencing them, but not in the way that we want to, right. We're influencing them away where they're like, this person doesn't see me. This person doesn't care about me and what it is that I want. So they'll remember us. We will be an influence, but not in the way that we want them to remember us and in the way that we want to influence them. So when you are wanting to influence someone, like that's a good check-in, right? Like, am I feeling judgment towards this person? Am I thinking thoughts that feel like terrible about who they are? And if so, like, what can I do to clean that up so that I can show up loving and compassionate in this relationship or conversation? Yeah. I just have to really pay attention to how I feel Mm -hmm. when I am, when I begin to see what I perceive as to be judgment, right? Because there are times when people might think, well, we have to judge right or wrong in situations. And for me, that actually is not helpful. I just have to know that for me, I I can't try to make the choice of somebody's make the decision of somebody's doing something right or wrong, because it always leads me to this judgment that just gets in the way. Yeah. So for me, it has to just, if I'm thinking about somebody, if I'm feeling a little bit of tension or something inside of me, I know there's something that's not quite right. And I can't even like tension is not really the word, but just something that doesn't fit something that feels other than love, something that feels other than wanting to just wrap my arms around somebody and pull them in that for me, I know that I have to see and get curious about what it is that's keeping me there. Heather, that's perfect, right? When it feels like something other than love, then we know, okay, there's something I can do so that I can change the way that I feel about this person who I want to influence, who I want to help, who I want to support and lift. Yeah. And that is a beautiful thing. That's why it just takes one person to change a relationship because yeah. we get to think about this person any way we want. And even if like we go into a relationship or a conversation with so much love and it's not met with, you know, whatever it is we hope it's met with, like it's still like we can still know that like we showed up from a place of love. Right. Yeah. And so the big question is, how do we do that? Right. People are always like, yeah, it's really easy to say that. It's really Mm -hmm. easy to say, I just want to show up and love all the people. And I've been there. And, and honestly, that's what led me to coaching. Actually, I finally felt like I found the things that helped me to be able to have that kind of love for all the people, even the people that I found to be obnoxious and annoying. Right. Yeah. That's the question of the day though. That's a good question. What do we do? Where do we start? (laughs) That's a good question. And I don't think any of us will ever even come close to being perfect at it. Yeah. But we will have more often than not moments where we're like, I'm really proud of how I showed up. I'm really so happy that I cleaned up the way that I was thinking about this person and how much better the experience was because of it. When we're aware, when we're conscious of it, when we're getting coached or just being intentional about how we want to think about the people in our lives. Yeah. And whether it's, you know, like people that we know personally, or just people that we know, like the, the thoughts that are creating judgment about anyone, even if we're just scrolling on social media and we're feeling judgment about the people that we're looking at, like that feels terrible for us. Mm -hmm. That affects us. Anytime I notice that I think that I know what somebody should or shouldn't be doing, you know, which I'm the oldest child too. So that's a tendency that's very easy for me, right? I just know if you will just do things my way, yeah, <laughs> everything will work out. But when I see myself doing that, thinking, oh, that person should or shouldn't do that, or that person should or should definitely not do that, that mm-hmm. is me judging in some way. And that is going to put up that wall that keeps me from being able to have the type of influence or showing the type of love that I want to have. So I always just have to assume that I actually have no idea what somebody should or should not be doing. You know, we don't know any of those things. We don't know. We, even if we think that morally somebody should or shouldn't be doing something, we have no idea. That's just, it's just not our business. And that's really where I have to start from. 
Yeah, I love that. And another thing to add, I think, is when we can start with ourselves and not be so critical and hard on ourselves, like looking back and just nitpicking everything about our past or looking in the mirror and nitpicking ourselves or judging ourselves in all the ways, like when we can show up more loving for us, it is easier to show up more loving and less judgmental for others. And it tends to be like, I find for me when I'm being extra hard on myself, extra critical, extra judgy, sometimes I need a little break from the self judgment. And so it's easy to just project it out into the world to other people. So if we can start with us, it's going to make it easier to do that for the people in our lives. Yeah, absolutely. And that really is the key to almost anything is starting with ourselves and having that love and that acceptance. Um, Because ultimately, a lot of times, if we look about the people that are close to us, the ones that we want to have influence on our kids, a lot of times, the reason why we think they should or shouldn't be doing something is because of how it might reflect upon us. And if we are a critical person about ourselves, that's going to matter to us a lot more. If we know that we're not going to be kind to ourselves, if our kid makes a choice that we don't like, and we think might reflect a bad, reflect badly on us, we're going to talk trash to ourselves so harshly that that becomes more of the reason why we don't want them to make that choice than anything else. So if we know whatever choice this child makes, I'm still going to be able to be kind to myself. Yeah. We'll be kind to ourselves and we'll be able to be kind to them as well. Yeah. That's such a good point. And even on another note, like, you know, people that I coach, sometimes they're, they're building a business or maybe network marketing Mm -hmm. and they're judging the way that they look or they're judging the way that they sound, which I've totally done for me. Right. And then it makes it so much harder when you're judging yourself to put yourself out there in the world and to, to serve and to be a positive influence because you're judging the heck out of yourself. Yeah. Right. So that is a really good place to start is to love yourself more. Of course, we're going to have some judgments about ourselves. So I'm not saying we should judge ourselves for judging ourselves, right? But just the, just the awareness of, you know, how do I want to talk to myself? How do I want to think about myself? How do I want to feel about myself? And then we can put that out into the world. Well, yeah, think about, and as we're using the word influence, ultimately the person we are having the greatest influence on is ourselves. And if we are constantly judging ourselves, we are not able to have that influence, that positive voice, the biggest cheerleader that's actually in our head is ours is, is us, right? Like we're the ones that can influence us to do great things, obviously with the help of our heavenly parents, but we can't even hear those voices Mm -hmm. if we are constantly judging. So I think what you've talked about today, influence and having an influence in people's lives. And the biggest thing that gets in the way is judgment is also a very personal, we can put it on a personal level too. We can have great influence on who we are, but if we get in the way with our own judgments of who we are, it, we can't go anywhere. Right. Yeah. And these are just really good things to think about, right? Just to be conscious of and to love ourselves through the journey of being less judgmental, you Mm -hmm. know, is a fun thing to think about. Yes. Yes, it is. Well, Marcy, thank you so much for talking with me today. It's been fantastic for me. I love to think about all these things and the different layers and how they apply in so many different ways. And And thank you for helping to bring a lot of that to life. But before we go, can you share with people where they can find more of you? Absolutely. Thank you, Heather. I loved talking with you too. It's, this is my jam talking about all these things and, and thinking about how, how I want to show up and how my family, I just have to say is so glad that I have these conversations. They don't even know that they're glad that I have these conversations because this saves them from having to have these conversations. (laughs) with me, which they don't necessarily love. So I'm glad yeah. for all of my coaching friends that I get to. Right. And so it's amazing. <laughs> Amen to that. Yes. Um, so to find me, you can go to my website, which is Marcy, M-A-R-C-I-E 
McGee, M-C-G-E-E, coaching.com. And I am on Instagram as well at Marcy McGee coaching. So thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thanks again for being here. Thank you to all of our listeners for being here. We love you guys. And we love that we get to do this and, and to be here with you and share a little bit of your life. So we'll see you again next week. Hey, we just wanted to thank you for spending part of your day here with us at Latter-day Life Coaches and being part of this conversation. Share this with your friends so that you can have a conversation with them on this topic as well. And as always, subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Have a good one, my friends.